Hello, hello, hello. How hello. are you all hello. lovely people today? And we are back with a return to love upside down, but yeah, that's well, how it goes with Facebook. You fix it by I, doing this. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> we need to work. hold a mirror. Right. Anyway. Anyway. So last time we talked about the fact that of course when you're in a relationship and your goal is to grow, that it takes a lot all the work pretty much is about you and we shouldn't presume that it's the other person who needs to be fixing, right? With everything we've covered before, being the mirror of the other and all that. And so we said that not beyond just working on yourself, which at this point is kind of a given, right? If you want to go grow in a relationship, the important was the importance was to give the other a soft, trusting place, a safe place to be able to reveal their wounds because it's good to say yes you have to be open and vulnerable but if your partner doesn't give you a safe place that you can trust that you can reveal these wounds then it's kind of counterproductive right and the kind of the point that we're that we want to make today is the idea that you can't just be um, neutral in that you can't just be allowing the other person to do allowing mm. you know, whatever allowing the other person to just scream it out whatever and you just sit there you know like a blob and and take it and be neutral about it you have to in order to help each other grow we have to be actively participating in the 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 expectation that they are going to grow right in in this just as a because it's just exactly that on page 126 there's one tiny sentence that marion says love is a participatory emotion and that's the whole thing right and further down the page 20, 126 again she says part of working on ourselves is learning how to support another person in being the best that they can be right exactly and i mean there's their studies kind of try to back a little bit away from the spiritual and then more into you know everyday life is you know there it's easy to imagine and there's studies that prove that teachers who expect their students to excel the students tend to excel mm. if, uh, if teachers expect their students to fail the students are more likely to fail so the the expectation and that's there's quantum physics in there somewhere but that's a topic for another discussion but when you when you're in a relationship with your partner and you're both working on your your growth you have to expect the best you have to actively consciously expect the best for your partner this best mm -hmm. outcome what's best for your relationship yeah and, and expect them we all we've all experienced this right it's like we're in a situation and I will, and that actually relates to something else we talked about before, about bringing the past into mm -hmm. the present, right. and then you're sure to create a future like the past. And it's the idea of, well, you, he always does this, so you expect the other person to behave the way you didn't like before. Right. Instead of not only giving them a chance to be new in the moment, it's bringing the past into the present and projecting it into the future and yeah. thereby perpetuating what so, what you've seen. So if on the, uh, if, you know, as opposed to that, if in every moment you choose to, you make the conscious effort to say, I expect them to be great. I expect them to react positively. I expect them to be over their fears. I expect them. And then it's like the students and you will, you are participating right. in the healing, not just being a safe place, holding a safe space, but you are participating. Right. And that's, you know, we, we call these confessions of a practically enlightened mm -hmm. couple. And it's, you know, this is a practical, this is a kind of a, a mm -hmm. teaching of that's, that's used in a practical way is I know personally I do this. I think a lot of us do, but I'll admit that I do this when we're in a disagreement about something or she's done something that's triggered my ego. I have a tendency to hold on to it and chew on it. Oh my God, she's always doing this. Oh my God, she always does that. Oh my God. She's always, she's always, she's always. And it's that, that constant dwelling on the past, bringing that dwell, that, that that past into the present and then 
apparently unconsciously creating it in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, that we do, it's our subconscious mind, and it's something that we do, and it's something that I'm actively working on in myself to to let that go. You know, we don't control our emotions, uh, we don't control the thoughts that, that pop into our head, but we have absolute control over whether to hold on to them or mm -hmm. let them pass. Yeah. And in the, in, in, I want to read another little passage of Marianne connected to expecting the best and helping the other person become the best by support and through love. It's what uh, she, she talks about the, the fairy tale called The Frog Prince. It's one, page 128, 129. The fairy tale called The Frog Prince reveals the deep psychological connection between our attitudes toward people and their capacity for transformation. In the story, a princess kisses a frog and he becomes a prince. What this signifies is the miraculous power of love to create a context in which people naturally blossom into their highest potential. Neither nagging, trying to get people to change, criticizing or fixing that or fixing can do that. Exactly. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's that thing. It's being there. She doesn't, the princess doesn't just stand there and look at the prince. She actually takes action, bends over, kisses and provide love to the prince. And that's how he becomes the best version of himself and expresses his whole potential of being a prince. So that's pretty sweet. And when you were talking just a little bit before on the dwelling of the negative, that's the other part we wanted to talk about today. And that's in the title, in the, in the quote that I put, that you will now read, 127, I think it is. We don't get to the light through endless investigation of the darkness. After a certain point, the discussion always becomes circular. The only way to the light is through entering the light. So if you want love, you have to, you have to always be injecting love into the system. And then I've jumped way ahead to page 166, where she actually says that. Whenever love is added to any part of the system, there is an increase to every part. Love only gives rise to more love. Yeah. And to, again, to, to, to wrap things up, is the idea of taking time off. We put it up there in the title because the, we know that we have to work on ourselves. We work on our relationship. We're learning all these tools. But one of the tools that we can't forget is we have to take a break because this deep analysis and investigation of the darkness at some point just gets really dark and heavy. <laughs> and you've got to jump out. You've got to play hooky. You've got to call the truth and just say, let's just enjoy being humans on this planet yes, for an hour, a for break. a day, for yeah. a week, whatever you you need but at some point and we've done that before right it's like we're so tired of the heaviness and the discussion and the growth and all that how about we start our conversations again in a week yeah and we just like and it never takes a week no it never we takes never a go week. we no. never go a week <laughs> but but it's the idea of saying let's just stop even the yes. positive stuff even yeah. it's just like let's just stop yeah Take because it gets to the point where even the positive stuff we it's, use a little tone, you know, <laughs> we recite wisdom to each other with a little, oh, you're forgetting, you're forgetting you're supposed to. Yeah, but even, even if it was just in celebration, it's just at some point you have to take a break, stop talking about it, let God, let go, let God, give yourself time to integrate all the things that you've been working on so that they are settled, they are part of you, and then you get to the next place and, you know, it's, know it's like, it's take a break from, take a vacation from the work, yeah. you know, it's yeah. not just from work in general that we all take vacations from it. We've got to do the same with the work we are doing on ourselves For and sure. in the relationships. For sure, you got to let it integrate, you got to let it integrate. So let go. Let God <laughs> and uh, enjoy a day off. Go play hooky. We mm -hmm. encourage you to do so. Okay. Okay. See you, folks. Love you.